Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Now, it's been a while since we've done one of these takeaway challenges and the landscape has changed significantly. So what better time to support local restaurants, eat delicious food and buy me lunch. You've got 50 pounds each. You have a different food delivery app each. Jamie, you have Uber Eats. Barry, you have Deliveroo. And I'd like you to purchase my lunch in three categories. This is a lunch and a half. It's a hundred pound lunch for Mike, firstly. <laughs> yeah. It's great. In what other situation could you say this? Like, I'm going to the bar, mate. Would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, please. But on three conditions. <laughs> so round one is story. I'm looking for a restaurant or dish that has the best story. Round two, Instagram ability. You eat with your eyes. So you'll be taking a photo of your dish and we'll put it up on Instagram and let the community decide which is their favorite. And round three, originality. I'd like a dish that I've never seen nor heard about before. Now it goes without saying, all of these things have to look and taste delicious regardless. That's a challenge. Fried chicken off the menu then. I'm loving this because I'll be judging, I'll be eating. It's really painful, but I was in that position last uh -huh. time and it's a fantastic position oh, to I'm be in. I'm jealous. Yes, it's a very blessed position to be in and um, I will make sure that I'm aware of that. You have some time for some research. Let's start now. Mike's an incredibly picky and tricky customer to try and please. He's not gonna make this easy for us. Mike's not just judging this on how good it tastes or how good it looks. He wants to know the backstory. He wants to know everything about it and that's where I fall down. I'm most nervous about the Instagram battle. It's something that I should be good at, but I'm, I'm losing it over and over again. You lose it on a daily basis because Evers is so much more popular than you are on Instagram. <laughs> I think we're going to have to search pretty hard to find something Mike's not tried or heard of before. He's got quite a short term memory though. So just do something from a couple of years ago, <laughs> might be safe. Mike, round one, story time. Oh! What you have in front of you is arepa polo frito with yuca and guasacaca sauce. Well, it looks great. Dig in and let me tell you all about Arepa & Co, created by husband and wife team, Gus and Kath, with the mission to make Londoners fall in love with Arepas, Venezuelan food, and putting on the Latin fiesta whenever they can. <laughs> Plus, they host what sounds to me like the most amazing sounding nights imaginable. Drag bingo. Oh, okay. Right, all that aside, does it taste nice? It is very, very delicious. The sweet corn mush. I would probably call that a corn puree. It really adds to the whole dish. Fried chicken, excellent. Cassava fries covered in this amazing spicy seasoning. The sauce is like nothing I've had before. Really delicious. So have you had arepas before? No. They are small savory corn cakes that can be topped or filled. They offer tons of traditional fillings. You've done very well here. Ooh. Before you get carried away, mate, don't forget this is one of six courses, so <laughs> easy, easy on the bread. Story time with Baz? <laughs> Story time with Baz? Story time with Baz. <laughs> Ooh, this is so Barry Taylor. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what have we got? So in front of you, you have some miso glazed aubergines, as well as deep fried cauliflower and green tahini. Sounds great. These two dishes have come straight from Amber. The place is absolutely buzzing. And the food is out of this world. Aubergine is one of their standard dishes. Miso glaze on top. And then the deep fried cauliflower with the tahiti on top. Quite a nice light lunch. Deep fried cauliflower? Apart from the deep fried bit. <laughs> yeah, healthier. So the name Amber comes from the ancient trade route of Amber from Sicily right through to the Baltic Sea. The food itself is inspired by the Mediterranean flavors but has a Middle Eastern style. They're both spectacular. Deep fried cauliflowers, look at it. It tastes as it looks and it's really delicious. The aubergine is so complex. The green tahini and the yogurt and then the pomegranate seeds. You literally just do get everything. You both pick delicious dishes and you've both done your research. This is gonna be really tough. Story-wise, I feel like I'm going to give the point to Jamie. I've never eaten Venezuelan food before. He's got quite a short-term memory though. Arapas. It's really crispy. 
on the bottom and then it's still really fluffy on the inside. It's amazing, you get the best of all the textures. And I like the story of people bringing their culture cuisines to a new place and sharing it with others. I think what he means is he likes my story of bringing cuisines and cultures to London, but not yours. Yeah, okay, next round, bring it on. Round two, Instagrammability. Baz and I have each taken a picture of our dish, uploaded it to Instagram. You are now voting on your favorite one, and we're gonna let Mike taste them, try them, see what he thinks before we reveal the actual winner. What? That is the least Jamie looking dish I've ever seen. I absolutely <laughs> agree. I tried to go Barry Taylor. <laughs> It's got edible flowers, you've gone full Ebers. The menu description is burrata on charcoal sourdough, rosemary roasted cherry tomatoes, balsamic vinegar, fresh greens, pink beetroot sprinkle, and olive oil. The pink beetroot sprinkle on the burrata is cool. A charcoal sourdough, as good as it looks, it doesn't look very charcoal. -y. It's more char grilled, I yeah. would say. Would you ever order this for yourself? I would do, I mean, money being no option, there was a side of ham. Okay, I'd right. Add, I'd add that as well, but it's worth pointing out, it came in a box, it is as it came. So this has come from the Clean Hearts Cafe. They say that they're the one-stop shop for all things coffee and organic. Burrata's really nice and creamy. Tomatoes are, are fantastic, they're really sweet. They almost taste like jam, and they add a really nice sweetness to a very savoury dish. It looks great, and it tastes great. Baz, your turn. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> In front of you, Michael, you have raspberry croissants and a Nutella croissant as well. Oh, a Nutella. A Nutella. Nutella. It's Nutella. 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 It's not old Nutella, it's Nutella. Nutella. <laughs> These jumped out, well, for obvious reasons. That is more than delivered what I was hoping for. I've never seen a croissant stuff it that beautiful. Well, look how filled that is. Nutella or raspberry? I'll go for some raspberry, please. I'll try both. Tuck in. These croissants are from Ori, a French patisserie and boulangerie in London. Elizabeth and Lauren, the founders, they wanted to take the food they loved growing up in France and have a London twist on them. But everything is made on site, freshly baked. And these are one of their signatures. They are not just looks and no substance. They're exceptional croissants. I mean, you can see the flaky layers and they are flaky and they're filled with the proper like conserve. When getting them delivered, they're very expensive. But when you get to the shop itself, they're half the price. We'd love to find out how they color it. You didn't look into oh. how they did it. I didn't think my video. That is why millennials get such a bad reputation. I feel like ample time has passed to let the audience decide. If it were up to me, I'd pick these because I think they look fantastic, but they also do deliver on flavor, taste. They're exceptional. Your dish, Jay, tasted amazing. I think that's fair. Yours is a bit more unique. But it's not up to me. The final results are in. Oh no, this has not gone well for me recently. Mike's Instagram, so what did those five people vote for? Well, <laughs> it is, in my opinion, surprisingly close. There is 4% in it. Oh! And with 52% of the vote. <laughs> oh no, it's 52.48. Wow. And therefore the winner, is Barry Taylor's croissants. I say Barry Taylor's. Yeah, yes, Ori. Ori. Ori's croissants. Yeah. yeah. But I will well take it, thank you. We are tied and going into the <laughs> final round with a cliffhanger. Round three, originality. Find a dish that Mike has never had or heard of before. All to play for. As it's so delicately poised, full transparency, I'm gonna make you work for it. I'm also going to make you work for it. Lift the cloche. Okay, you are. Wow. Oh, it smells amazing. I can see something that looks like an organ. In front of you, you have Mao Zhe Wang, probably. 
This is a dish that originates in Chongqing, a major city in the southwest of China. So Mao... Can I stop you there? Can I drink this, please? <laughs> Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> it's spicy and it's on my lips. <laughs> what is it? Feel free. That's a soybean drink. Fine. That's tasty. So traditionally, it's made of duck blood curd, tripe, chicken gizzard, and other organ parts, simmered in a broth that is made of peppercorn, and I don't know if you can see any in there, chilies. It's tough to see the wood for the chilies. Is this the boiled blood? Yes. It's more texture than anything. I can't really taste much to it. It's like very gelatinous, but yeah, you have to bite into it. What have I got here? Could be a heart. But I've got to go for it. Good. Oh, delicious. So this is from the Old Street Chinese restaurant. It then has its real name, which is Chongqing, the name of the city. And it serves authentic dishes from the city. And the city is a really famous city in China for its cuisine. Flavors are all there. Very spicy, very oily. Therefore, lots of fat, lots of flavor. And you get that sort of sweet and sour edge to it as well. It's great, and I would never, ever, ever have picked this on a menu because I wouldn't have the guts. Pardon the pun. We talk about food waste. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been wasted from the animals <laughs> that have gone into that dish. It's just our palates and our taste are unfamiliar with those types of ingredients. Have we been sheltered? Uh, yes. 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 Look at us. <laughs> what a privilege to be able to experience this without even having to travel. You've done very well. Strong style. I mean, my lips are on fire. Yeah. And I'm in physical pain because of you, but you've done very well. <laughs> Barry, please tell me you got me gelato. You've got to go somewhere to beat that. I can guarantee you that mine is just as delicious and probably less painful. I'm I've had that. sliders before. <laughs> <laughs> in front of you, you have some sliders and some lettuce cups from Brigadiers. Barry, the brief was something he's never had before. Let's go for the lettuce cups first. Now, don't you hate it when you're thinking, what shall I have tonight, Indian or Chinese? Here, we have both. These are Indo-Chinese paneer lettuce cups. Okay, so it's paneer cheese. You've got spiced paneer cheese with a crispy onions and a yogurt on top and a lettuce leaf. It's a little starter. Mm. Brigadiers is an Indian restaurant inspired by a lot of the military bars in India. You can go there to watch sports, play pool, cards, and lots of bar snacks as well as some amazing Indian dishes as well. Quite really tasty. But the focus really is on the, on the sliders in front of you. Now, I these, don't want to ruin the game, Baz, but I have had sliders. These before. are goat kebab sliders with a fenugreek chutney. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to discard this. After. Jamie's, <laughs> Jamie's ruined that for me. It's a true Peshwari delicacy, with its name derived from the Pushtan word chapal. These goat tikis are a mainstay on the Brigadier's menu. Definitely never had a goat slider. I've had sliders, I've had goat, but never all together. So, Yes, as a dish, this is completely new. When it turned up earlier, what I loved about this as a takeaway, all the elements were apart, which oh, led you to construct it yourself. The goat is so amazingly spiced, and the fenugreek just comes through the whole thing and sort of just adds a dimension. Also, what's bonkers in the UK is like, goat is not one of those things I would look to buy in a supermarket. So when you're looking to get takeaway, it jumped out to something a little bit different, even though it's one of the most highly eaten red meats in the world. Not in London. No. And I do think there's some comfort in the fact that it's encased in a delicious, shiny bun. <laughs> yeah. It's like taking you outside of your comfort zone, but there's still a little rope around you to yeah. pull you back in. Okay, I have some questions before I make my final decision. Baz, what made you pick this dish? I wanted to go for something that was familiar with us to start off with, like a cuisine that we understand, and then try and find something new within that cuisine. Spaff? Shock value, innit? It was very, yeah, it was obvious. <laughs> yeah. You just went, no. Do you know what? It's not dissimilar to Barry's taking your preconceptions of Chinese cuisine and then completely throwing them out and going, no, what we get in the UK as a whole isn't generally traditional Chinese cuisine. And there is a place just up the road that will deliver you traditional, authentic Chinese dishes. And I bet you've never tasted anything like it before. No. This is really hard. This is tough because everything I've eaten today has been amazing. So firstly, the restaurants that you picked. Awesome, awesome. London, well done. But 
I'm not judging the restaurants, I'm actually judging your choices. So therefore, the winner of this round and the winner overall is... Jamie. Gosh. And that's purely because I would never order that dish in a million years because I'm a narrow-minded little idiot and I wouldn't have got to taste it had you not chosen it for me. So, fantastic. It was outstanding. Round of applause for you, Spaff. Well done. I mean, I'm not a chef, so I can't give you a badge. And why would I do that? Because I'd lose out on that. Tell me about price. How much did you spend? So for my arepa and yuca, the burrata on sourdough, and the Chongqing style boiled blood curd, £48.95. Basil? So for the aubergine and cauliflower dish, three croissants, lettuce cups, and the goat burger, it was £48.20. Either way, it's a lot of food, isn't it? It's a lot of food, and we got a lot left over for all of us to eat, so... I've won twice. <laughs> so close to a clean sweep. We know who Mike's winner was. Was your winner the same? And which of those dishes would you have ordered and why? Also, which of these dishes do you think we should make on screen in the future? Let us know by oh. commenting down below. Don't say that, you know what they're gonna pick. Oh no. <laughs>